What's up, everyone? Jason Gilbuck here with Nick Tasso taking a look at some GPP plays for tonight's slate. Uh, 14 games. We have cores on our hands, which will be extremely chalky. Um, you and I, usually when we you know do these pods, we just kind of go outside the cores and not talk about the obvious. Yeah, absolutely. I really always avoid talking about cores. I mean, there's no real point in it. Um, if you play DFS at all, you kind of should realize that you should always get at least some exposure. Um, doesn't need to be a lot, but differentiate your lineups a little bit and add some cores. Um, but I just feel it's not really useful if we just go through an entire podcast just naming cores players. No, I mean, especially with there's so many other high totals on the slate. And uh, I think the cores in general, I mean, I, I like the Rocky side much more than I do like Seattle. Yeah, I mean, you look at uh, Blackman, and they have a lot of good guys. So if I had money on it, I'd probably be going more with the uh, Rockies than I would. Uh, looking at catcher tonight, uh, I mean, crazy antics in yesterday's game with Bryce Harper. And I think a lot of people are giving Posey some stick just because he just sat there and let it all unfold. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I know I have Posey down on my list, but to be honest with you, I don't. I personally don't blame really Posey. I mean, you're an all star, and this beef really isn't between you and uh, Bryce Harper. And Bryce Harper is kind of crazy. So if I was Posey, I'd probably have stayed out of that fight too. Um, yeah, he probably should have ran right away once uh, Harper did. But other than that, I, I don't really fault the poor guy. Um, he's already had a serious injury, and I'm sure he doesn't want another one. So I sort of get where Posey's coming from. Uh, and now we're transitioning into why I have him on uh, my list today, just because he's going up against a lefty. He's been so good um, against lefties this year, 241 ISO, 440 Woba. And we all know that Gio Gonzalez can have good games, but then he can kind of go crazy and uh, and have games where he just absolutely stinks up the place. And this could be one of those games, but in the same token too, I'm kind of afraid they might, Throw at Posey, um, so it makes me a little nervous. Yeah, we're against all ten home runs already allowed to right-handed bats this year. Yeah, he, he he's not good. I mean, some some games he he does have a good uh, good start here and there, but most games not really. Yeah, so I, I don't mind him. Uh, Jonathan Decor is a guy I'll be taking a look at. Uh, a little bit cheaper, a uh, good ballpark there in Texas. I uh, look at Andres. I mean, he's been reverse blitz this year, 383 Woba to righties, um, 2.08 home runs per nine. Uh, I think this game is going to play out really well for offenses yet again. Absolutely, and you really have to like uh, Texas right now. It's starting to heat up. I know we're not in the dead of summer, but uh, it's slowly getting there, and uh, we saw a lot of fireworks yesterday as well uh, in that ballpark. Uh, another guy I'll take a look at, Salvador Perez, um, going up against uh, Justin Verlander. And he actually has some good success against Verlander uh, in his career, BVP-wise, but also just Verlander this year. I mean, uh, 320, what would to righties? I mean, it's not great. It's not bad either, but 37% hard contact rate. Uh, I think Perez is going to be super low-owned um, because I don't feel like anyone's going to be literally looking at Royals. Yeah, absolutely. I must say it's no one's really looked for Royals unless they're in a really good matchup and – nailed it uh Verlander is still a pretty good pitcher even though he does have uh moments where he's not that great so I definitely can see playing Perez in this situation especially with the low ownership rate you'll get yep um as far as other catchers I mean who are you going down to uh one of my cheap guys uh would be John Hicks for the Tigers staying in that same ballpark obviously I don't like the ballpark for uh hitters but you know what he's going up against uh Sko Gilland who's making his first uh, appearance, lefty, righty, I think things could happen. Um, Hicks really obviously isn't an everyday player, but against lefties, he can kind of do some damage. He has one home run in 12 at-bats against him. Um, this would be perfect for McCann if he was still playing, but right now he's hurt, so that's not happening. Yeah, I, I mean, I think when you're looking at tonight's slate, I mean, paying down behind the dish is in play, and uh, yeah, I mean, Hicks does actually stand out as, as a, a reasonable option. Yeah, and he's pretty cheap, so I definitely don't mind him here. Um, and then the only other guys I wanted to throw out there would be uh, one of the Red Sox catchers, whoever's in there. Quintana uh, he still has uh, glimpses where he's good, but he has struggled a, a good amount this year. Um, and when you throw in Sandy Leone or even uh, Christian Vasquez, they could get a couple of hits. The only issue is they hit really low in the order, but when you're saving that kind of salary, sometimes it doesn't really matter. 
No, I'm with you. And I think the only other guys I'll consider is whoever comes out in the Milwaukee ones. I, I always pray that it's Jet Bandy because he just has the higher upside. Um, but I don't mind either one against Tyler Pill, and you're probably going to get that bullpen pretty early anyway. Um, so hopefully Bandy's in. He's a guy I'll take a look at tonight. Yeah, totally. I feel like we did this reverse a, a week or two ago where I had the Milwaukee guys and you had the Red Sox guys. Yeah, I think we did. <laughs> All right, moving on to first base, right? First base, uh, yeah, and, and this is a spot. I mean, I think there's a fair amount of options. Um, first guy that really stood out to me, um, you know, I don't mind handling Ramirez. As you said, Quintana's, you know, flashes um, here and there. But, I mean, for the most part, he's been pretty average against righties. Um, home runs are starting to come a little bit more. Hanley, uh, been a little unlucky this year, hitting the ball extremely hard. His numbers against lefties over the last few years are always impressive. So, um, once again, I don't think people are going to be looking to pick on Quintana on the site because there are a lot of options. So, you'll get Hanley at some lower ownership. Yeah, I agree with you there. You look at the Red Sox offense, some days they come out swinging, and then some days they just kind of are so-so, um, and it's hard to pick out which one uh, which one is going to be out there um, on any given slate. I think tonight is you're going to get a mixed bag. Uh, so I, I, I don't mind Hanley, uh, but I just have a feeling that it might not be him doing some of the offense because I, I think there will be offense um, against Quintana, just not sure which bat's going to do it. Yeah, no, that's definitely fair. Um, you and I both on Logan Morrison. Um, Ray's bat's certainly in play tonight against Nick Martinez, which – a bad right-hander who doesn't miss a lot of bats, I mean, that's just – that's not good against this Rays team that, you know, their only weakness is strikeouts. But if a, strike, a pitcher's not striking out, guys, they're clearly in play. Yeah, and, and Texas clearly is going to help them as well, too. Uh, you look at Nick Martinez, 337 wall by the lefties. Um, he's still been pretty bad against righties, too. So I, I think some of the Rays righties are still in play, too. Uh, and he's already given up three home runs to lefties and, and not that – big of a, uh, a span. So Morrison, like you said, he's, he's on one of the tops of my list um, just because he has so much potential, uh, e even though he did struggle yesterday. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Lucas Duda, um, I'm a big fan of the Mets tonight. And contrarian way, should get some little ownership on him. Um, on the cheaper side, too, and this guy's been hitting the ball really well. A couple homers over the last five games. Um, going up against uh, a relatively weak arm in Zach Davies. Um, it was a lot of 1.91 home runs per nine to lefties this year. Um, even in the ballpark, even in cooler weather, I'm, I'm certainly fine with some of these Mets uh, left-handed bats. Yeah, I know a lot of times when we talk, we have a lot of uh, lefty, uh, lefties in the Mets, and we tell everyone to stack them. So I definitely like this uh, here by Duda. He bats a little bit lower typically, but I don't mind him. Um, you look at Davies, and he's been up and down, uh, but I think he's going to struggle here. Uh, and you're looking at Justin Smoke. Um, I mean, this guy's been impressive, especially in the power department. Um, 12 homers on the year already. Yeah, he's been really good. Um, and this isn't just recency bias with his home run yesterday, but he, he's looked good at the plate. And everyone knew he had the potential power um, one day. And they were just curious when it's going to happen. And kind of looks like he's figured it out um, in Toronto. It's funny, you go back to last year and there was another guy, uh, Michael Saunders, who hit had tremendous power there, and now he's gone away, and Smoke's kind of filled in that role. Yeah, I mean, it was he was such a boomer bust guy over the last few seasons, and now it's finally coming around where you know you're starting to hit a little bit more often than not. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's been seeing a lot more everyday playing time, which obviously that comes when you're hitting a, a little bit better. So it makes some sense. Um, it just stinks if you're going to stack Toronto because you can never really throw in both him and uh, Morales. Um, and to be honest with you, I typically uh, tend towards Morales, but lately it's been Justin Smoke, and I've kind of gone towards Justin Smoke now. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, anyone else at first base you like? Uh, we're going a little retro about 10 years ago. Albert Pujols uh, facing his old friend Bartolo Colon and uh, – to be honest with you, I know Cologne really doesn't have uh, too much left in uh, his tank. So Pujols, he really isn't the best, um, but he still can hit the ball out like he's seen recently. Uh, he has hits in seven of his past eight games with two home runs in that span. So there, there's still some life in there. Uh, it just depends on when it comes. Yeah, and I mean, he's chasing down 600 too. So, I mean, you know. 
he's got a couple homers away. I think he's two homers away from 600. Yeah. Tossing that narrative. Yeah, you might as well. Just go with it. <laughs> uh, second base, um, I'm really looking to pick on Mike Fires tonight. Um, he's allowed 12 home runs to right-handed bats this year. 496 Woba. Um, this is a guy who was going to be tossed from the rotation, but because of the injury to Charlie Morton, he's back in. Um, I, I like Brian Dozer. I like the upside of these Twins bats here tonight. Um, Dozer hitting over well, uh, you know, 937 OPS over the last 10 games. Um, reasonable price. It, it's expensive, but I'm kind of people. I'm kind of hoping people are off paying up for a second baseman. Yeah, I agree with you. you look at Dozer, and he, he's been really good lately. He's a big hitting streak going on right now. Um, and like you said, Fires, he's just been awful. Uh, this whole game, I, I think there's a lot of potential on both sides, even though Barrios has looked uh, good recently. So I, I like throwing him in there, uh, Dozier. And then on the flip side, I kind of have Altuve. So staying in that same game, um, you look at Altuve, he's uh, hits um, seven hits over his past three games. He's just been really efficient uh, and two double uh, digits DK points in those three games. Yeah, you know, look at Brios. Brios is is a guy that you you know stacked against over the last few years um, when he came up and tried to pitch in the majors. Looked a little bit better this year, and I'm, this is just a tough spot for him. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how this game plays out because Houston's offense, given how red hot they are, Barrios can affect that he's pitching well. It's it's going to be a fun one to watch. Yeah, totally. And you look at uh, Barrios, I remember – he uh, had a start against Houston, I believe it was last year, and everyone was saying there's a lot of upside because they struck out so much. And going into this game, it's just so funny how things have changed now with Houston, and they uh, very rarely strike out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they've dropped that, that strikeout rate quite a bit. Um, moving down here, uh, I don't mind Neil Walker, kind of same lefties with the Mets. Uh, this guy's been hitting pretty well, a couple of homers over the last week or so. Um, on the cheaper side, I mean, I love him in that order, hitting fourth. Um Especially out of the other guys around him. I mean, VR is starting, you know, he's been slumping to start this season. Starling Castro's coming back down to earth. Second base is starting to become a little bit weaker. Yep, I can definitely see that there. Walker has, has a lot of potential. Uh, he's hit, has a good spot in that order, um, hitting kind of in the middle of it. So I definitely like him here as well. Uh, if I had to drop down, I'd probably go a little bit to uh, like Devin Travis. Um, I know I'm still in that same game, but Cincinnati really isn't throwing out anyone uh, of importance tonight. And uh, Travis does have a 13-game hitting streak. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I mean, uh, I, I definitely like the Jays bats here with their upside. Um, anyone cheap? I mean, I, I kind of struggled. I mean, obviously we don't have lineups out, but there wasn't anyone I really liked. I mean, Solarte's in a bad ballpark, but he's not in a bad spot for 3,300 on DK. Yeah, the, the cheapest I, I found going down would be uh, Chase Utley. Um, I can't believe I'm saying it after his uh, performance last year, but he's kind of been a serviceable hitter now, and uh, I, I think throw him in and uh, save the salary. Yeah, uh, I definitely don't mind him. Hell, I mean, Eric Sogard, 3,100. I mean, he's 11 for his last 25. Yeah, just make sure they have the uh, lineups correct because I, I know someone threw in. Uh, I forgot which uh, provider said that Sogard was leading off when it was really a Valar one day. So just keep an eye on that. Yeah. Uh, moving to the hot corner, um, obviously Arenado is going to draw some ownership. Josh Donaldson as well. Um, you and I are looking a little bit elsewhere. I mean, for the same reasons I love Dozier, I love Miguel Sano. Um, the right-handedness of fires, given the fact that he struggles, it just opens up the door for Sano to just, you know, show off the potential he's shown all year. Yeah, exactly. Coming off a home run yesterday, I think there there is a lot of potential uh, for Sano. And I know coming up, he was a lefty killer, but now he's really been figuring out how to uh, hit both sides of the uh, the pitcher. So I definitely like Sano here as well. Um, if you're looking elsewhere, I know Joey Gallo. Um, in that Tampa game, I mean, both their baseman in play. You're looking at Gallo. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know it, it seems like I'm just trying to chase uh, home runs right now, but Gallo really has, even though he's still hitting clear uh, near 200, uh, 200, has so much power that it's hard not to play sometimes, um, especially at uh, at Texas down there against a uh, a, a bad pitcher. Um, so I like him two home runs past two games. So throw him in. 
Yeah, no, I definitely always has a huge upside. You get a, a bat that doesn't miss, or a, a pitch that doesn't miss a ton of bats. Um, that sits well for him. Uh, I, I don't even mind the other side of that one. I mean, Evan Longoria, um, you know, homered in, in back to back games. He has six RBIs in the last two. Uh, this guy's extremely streaky. Um, you look up on Gore, he just goes on these runs where, you know, he'll hit for a week or two and then obviously cool off. Um, so getting him in this hot streak against Martinez, who's bad against both sides of the plate, uh, in that ballpark with that run total, still on the cheaper side. I mean, um, you know, I don't mind paying down at third base either, even with the top options. Yeah, I agree with you with Longoria. I think he's a little bit safer uh, bet when we're comparing him to Joey Gallo, uh, just because Nick Martinez, like I stated earlier, does struggle against righties as well. Yep. Um, you and I both had Travis Shaw, who's hitting the ball really well of late, um, going up against Tyler Pill. Um, a guy who's nothing special. I mean, he's probably not going to throw a ton of innings anyway. Um, but Shaw's, you know, hitting well and in this ballpark. Um, you know, I, th I think everyone's going to pretty much go overlooked. Yeah, cl clearly Shaw is, is a little bit better when he's in more favorable ballparks like Miller, uh, Miller Park or even Fenway last year. But I still think he's serviceable. He's still hitting around 300 or so. Um, and like you said, Pill really isn't anything uh, – so I, I think Travis Shaw, as long as they don't bring in lefties to face him, uh, is in a good spot here. Yeah, and I think, I mean, if you are paying up, I mean, obviously Aaron Nittle comes in as a, a pricier option, but, I mean, Josh Johnson's also quite a bit cheaper. Yeah, totally. Um, I kind of agree with you on that. Josh Donaldson is a beast. Um, I know he can struggle at times, but when he's on, he he's like Longoria where he just hits it in bunches. So, uh definitely a smart play with him as well. Yeah. Uh, moving over to shortstop, uh, two pay-up options. Um, you're looking at Xander Bogarts uh, going up against Quintana. Bogarts has always been a solid bat against left-handed pitching. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, he really hasn't shown the power one home run this year, but there's still potential there to collect hits. Um, definitely he's in a good spot. He's behind the order in case he is out again. Uh, but I don't mind him against Quintana. Quintana, like I stated earlier, has, has had times where he struggled. He won't give up runs, but he'll give up tons of hits. And guys like Xander Bogarts can rack up fantasy points when uh, that's happening. Yeah, I think Pedroia just hit the 10-day DL, so I would expect Bogarts to be yeah. up there again. That's what I heard, too. So I wasn't there. Uh, Got to take a look at Trevor Story um, against a lefty uh, in cores. Uh, should be a little bit higher owned tonight, um, but against Ariel Miranda, who's fly ball pitcher, uh, allows a ton of home runs. Um, Story coming back off the DL, hitting the ball hard, uh, has shown some upside here, a couple homers of late. Um, it's just more cores exposure, and I, I don't find that the price isn't really all that bad. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, 4,500 on DraftKings isn't bad for a Coors player. Um, and like you said, he is trending upwards, obviously, probably like four weeks ago. You wouldn't want to play him, but uh, I think he's kind of turned it around a little bit. If, if So if you are looking to pay up, he's a, a decent option. Uh, and I think as Drupal Cabrera was the other guy that we were taking a look at, um, I always prefer him over Reyes. There's just a little bit more upside out of him, even though um, Cabrera's been hitting six over the last, well, since he came back from the DL. But um, this is just another good spot for uh, Mets lefty. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, just don't overthink it. If you have the option to throw in some lefties for the Mets, um, throw him in. Cabrera, he's in a good spot too. So I, I like him here. Um, and then the last guy I had was uh, Tua Witzki. I know he's been batting further down in the order, but you look at uh, yesterday and he still did a lot of damage. Even, even if he didn't have the grand slam, he still was a, was a, a good hitter. Um, and when you have guys like Russell Martin and Justin Smoke to set the table in front of you, um, a lot of things are going to happen. Yeah, I mean, line is incredibly deep. Uh, I like Tula there. More over the outfield, um, God, all these guys are in such good spots. You and I were joking around before. I was just like, you just want to talk about everyone over 5K? I mean, even over 4,500, you might as well go with that. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of guys in there, but for the most part, they're, they're all in good spots. So uh, I, I know we were talking about Jay Martinez, Cruz, and even Blackman. So uh, it's really hard to go wrong with those guys. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I kind of hope they all cut into each other's ownerships. I mean, because even, you know, Aaron Judge, Michael Conforto's in play. 
Uh, if we're looking, though, I mean, I, Corey Dickerson, uh, expensive. I'm curious to see how many people play him tonight. I, I love Corey Dickerson in this ballpark. Um, huge power potential, given the fact that maybe Martinez doesn't miss bats. Hitting 378 over the last 10 games, a couple of homers. I mean, I would not expect Dickerson to be hitting 345 this year, but he is. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, sneak peek, I'm writing him up, and he's just been so good to hit for ba uh, batting average this year. It's just incredible. I, I know last year was really bad, and he did have some uh, years in Colorado where he was over 300, but everyone thought there was going to be a huge jump off, and, and we saw it last year, so I agree with you. It's hard to kind of fathom what's going on this year, but I'm going to ride it until uh, he proves us otherwise. Like you said, he has uh, seven hits over the past two games, and he's just been uh, on fire. Yeah, Ray's offense absolutely rolling. So, I mean, I don't mind them. Uh, I don't even mind a Steven Souza if you want to be contrarian, too, just going to fight that he's hitting the ball well. Um, uh, other bats, I mean, I, I like the Minnesota outfielders, um, Rosario, Kepler, and Grossman. I'll kind of tie them up in all three. I know Fires is reverse split, but still allowing 2.0 home runs per nine to lefties and a 330 Woba. So, um, I love the twin stack. Um, I, I like them as one offs. I mean, I'm just all aboard attacking Fires right now. Yeah, two guys I want to just mention would be uh, Chris Young from the Red Sox. He's pretty cheap going up against the lefty. Um, and then the other guy would be Andrew McCutcheon. He's just so far down on DraftKings, uh, 3,200. And, I mean, it's not a terrible matchup against the lefty. He's been doing well lately. So um, I, I think it's kind of a no-brainer to throw in McCutcheon. Yeah, I'll definitely take a look. I mean, hitting the ball hard. Um, definitely a guy who's going to start to come around. Uh, I'm with you. I mean, 3200 is really cheap against Ray. I know Ray's been decent. He's been fine on the road. But, yeah, as you said, I mean, McCutcheon certainly still worth a look at that price. Yeah, totally. And I, I, I wouldn't mind Granderson either. And even, uh, yes, he'll be, even though I just hate him, that's eight. Yeah, that's the only real downside with him always. <laughs> yep. uh -oh. Uh -oh. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up here, given the fact that your dog's about to go just ham on whatever's going on over there. On, on each other, actually. So, <laughs> probably think so. so that's us wrap things up here. You can head to Nord Day, Fancy Cafe, Contract, or Tools, and Content.